being an illustrator. No, I don't know anything about that. Well, it's just your good luck to share a studio with a professional illustrator. Thank God. <laughs> but technically, Katie, you're a professional illustrator. And so what I thought we would do is draw ourselves. Um, and as we draw, um, give ourselves, you know, equipment, things that we think might be useful. And we can make little sort of annotations to the drawings of ourselves uh, to uh, maybe sort of open up the topic of what being an illustrator might be all right um, i don't know whether we're going to sort of provide any amazing insights um, apart from maybe the way we see ourselves which is always an interesting thing you know providing a sort of little self-portrait as, as we talk um i well, like you to... always draw me with a big wide mouth and massive feet so... yes i do i mean the massive feet is 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 you know um actually to scale um, but the wide mouse just me having fun. Um, I always draw myself. I, I do every so often shave my beard off and then I sort of reveal a very fat face and then I then sort of grow my, my beard again. And when it gets a little too out of control, I then shave again. So I'm, I'm in constant what are you sort now? of... Oh, yeah, you're a bit wild, actually. I'm a bit Gandalf-y, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think I can feel a sort of, you know, clean shave coming on. Um... And I also, I think my eyebrows are getting a bit tufty as well. That's just, I think it gives me a certain headmasterly look. So being an illustrator, I think uh, for me, the one of my key, you're looking rather thoughtful and pensive there. Well, Waiting for the great illustrator you share the studio with to share some um, yeah, insights. Yeah, the lovely insights. <laughs> Always, always here for it. You know I am. Uh, you are very, very dutiful sometimes when you listen to me go on mm. about things. But it's you interesting. Just picked you picked up on my little you remarks. never, but you never grow out of, and I've, I've never grown out of um, uh, the sense of, of questioning. You know, and needing someone else to sort of bounce ideas off, or or, or to sort of judge. You know, whether the, this thing you're working on. You know, you, I. I might draw something and I, I need someone, and in this case you, because we share the studio, I need you to almost look over my shoulder and I, to, and I sort of seek affirmation. I say, you know, does this work? You know, or yeah. what do you think of, of this drawing? Um, because we can live inside our heads a lot and having that sort of another eye on, on, on what we're doing, I think is really useful. And I think that's part of it, although I think being an illustrator in a sense is, is quite, can be a, quite a solitary thing because we, uh, we spend a lot of our time in, in studios. But if you share a studio... You don't draw like that. I see you hunched over your desk. Yeah, but when I'm on the move, <laughs> I can be very self-supporting. That's true. I did an event at World Book Day um, the other day where they had no... Um, uh, no desk, no ease or anything. So I had to just hold my paper uh, propped up on a, on a sort of card envelope mm -hmm. and draw sort of, you know, almost over my shoulder. It was a weird experience. Staring at a blank wall. For hours. That's my day. Quite contemplative. <laughs> <laughs> contemplative, I think. But why a blank wall, Katie? Because that is the other th great thing about being an illustrator, is having a wall. And you can then stick stuff on the wall. You can create, in a sense, a mood wall of stuff. And for me, that is one of the great creative mm. sort of things, isn't it? About sort of having a studio where you can, you can put, you know, anything you like up behind you or in front of you or whatever and and you, you live with it so i've still got things on my wall uh drawings that i've done there's an a, an old gentleman with webbed feet that's been on my wall for the last decade oh, yeah. um there's a postcard of a polar bear on uh, a melting um iceberg and that has been there since 
2008. More importantly, you've got a, a painting I did. Yes, I have. When I've got I this. Was, that was yes, from your GCSE art. GCSE yes, art or something. Yes. It was from your, it might, was it GCSE or A-level? I can't remember. Oh, maybe it was A-level actually. But it's this lovely, like, gouache painting of a sort of, you know, almost like a John Singer Sargent. Yeah, I think it's a uh, copy of something like that. Is it? Well, it's it's beautiful. It's and I, I've loved it. Um, it's got a certain sort of naivety to it, but it's mm. also really beautifully done. And it's lived on my um, on my wall next to um, a card that you did when you were, I think, about four years old. And it's the three Christmas rabbits. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's that how was I used your to always draw. that was your Christmas card. <laughs> so again, it's 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 a really nice thing in a way to sort of you know put things up that you can live with and and think about a, um, a lot. Um, and I think you know I think we're talking about studios, aren't we? We're talking about a sort of studio environment. Mm. See, I'm finishing off your desk there. Yes. <laughs> And we're now in the studio, we're sitting at my desk in the studio, um, and there's a sort of quiet and peace, isn't there, um, that I get sometimes in libraries, but I get it in mm. my studio as well. Yeah, it's very peaceful here. Isn't it? And, and there's a Apart sense... from when someone's working on their patio or their, their house. That happens, doesn't it? mowing yeah. their lawn. Yeah, yeah, but I even quite find those um, moments quite comforting and, um, you know, subject of being an illustrator, I um, would sometimes ask, you know, what's your favourite part of being an illustrator? And what I say to that question is um, rainy Wednesday afternoons. Because it reminds me of when I was at primary school and oh, uh, in the winter and on a rainy midweek afternoon. Um, it would get dark because it was winter, sort of still during school time, maybe about two o'clock. It would be sort of gloomy enough for the teacher to put on the lights in, in the um, classroom. And I always found that so cosy. You didn't, they didn't put on the lights anyway? Mm. No, not not if, it, not if it was daylight and everything was like. I thought you were on... going to say it reminds you of like, um, you know, when the when it used to be really rainy, so you'd have like, I don't know what they called it, wet, like wet play. play. Yes, that <laughs> sounds a bit weird now. It does but... sound weird, but, but no, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's wet play now. Yeah, you could come in. No, no, yeah. I, I was in a was great. much harsher educational system oh, where they just yeah, shoved you out and you got wet. <laughs> <laughs> wet play was for wimps. Yeah, we just went out like sort of a piece of livestock and just had to sort of stand around <laughs> getting whatever protection we could get made it's made men of us um but the um uh, but on wednesday afternoons with uh, at primary school with the lights on i just love that that feel and so mm. now when i sit in my uh, peaceful studio um and it's winter time and it's altogether depressing in all sorts of ways you know <laughs> what i mean um Putting on the lights and just being in this quiet place where I, I can just sort of sit and think and draw and stare at the walls and yeah. and just, you know, while away it the hours. Crazy. It just, it's the nicest, nicest uh, part of my job, I think. And also sometimes I just think, you know, the world outside is doing its own thing and I'm here drawing from my imagination, you know, in another world. And sometimes that feels as if I'm sort of, I don't know, retreating from the world in some ways. Oh, I think you probably are. Um, I think I probably am. Uh, and yet on another way, I just feel I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. And I think, uh, I think now more than ever, you know, when, when the world outside is, is so grim, um, finding you know, a place to go. There's the little sort of ghost of me in the background. Um, is is a sort of you know is, is is a form of consolation. I think we we often all of us turn to art as as a consolation. I think um, as we do literature and books and reading and stuff. You know they're all parts of the, of the same thing. Turning <laughs> to art to both make sense of 
of of life and yeah, it's one it's one um, way I think definitely. Yes, it is, and and you know it's it's why I've always loved um, uh, illustrating. Um, I suppose the other aspect of being an illustrator that I really enjoy is um, my relationship with uh, with books because I've been a sort of lifelong reader um, mm. all my life. Um, ever since I actually learnt to read, once I decoded this difficult thing of, called learning to read, I've read all my life. Um, and being an illustrator, certainly of, of predominantly children's books, means that I get to interact with these amazing things called books. Mm. And that, to me, is one of my favourite things. And, and the, you know, the other part of that also is I get to work with writers. And that's, that's another great pleasure, um, working with both writers and poets. Mm. Um, and I've got to say some of them, I, I don't think I've ever met a poet I haven't liked. Mm. Um, but maybe I've only met the nice poets, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, people like Roger McGough and um, uh, Ted Hughes and... Just, Maybe just, poets are just nice people, aren't they? So. I think they're contemplative and they're, they're, they're mm. very... Um, insightful i think simon armitage you know is, is just mm. it's fantastic i love his his take on the world you know which i think is what poets bring yeah um and i think also the way that you know language conveys things and as illustrators i think we are nothing without words mm. you know as uh, that the words i think are, are the key and then we are there to sort of respond the, yeah, yeah respond to, to to the words never get in the way of the words or but try to to sort of give them a context or or, or support um the reading experience yes well put i think oh, you're you're very blue um, you're very blue in that very blue. <laughs> yeah i've given you some lips that's that's better Thanks. i think um i think uh that's a, I think nicely manicured eyebrows as opposed to your father's, um, and I think I think your hair's yeah, a little you bit long. Eyebrows need a trim, but they're very long, aren't they? They are actually. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm going to give myself I was a, say you to ask an extra extra little sort of owlish um, sort of a sprig to my. So yeah, I mean, I I think um, you know, and yet being an illustrator, I, I would just maybe um, sort of conclude in a way by saying. Mm that the key to being an illustrator is to give yourself a context. So even as we draw like this, we are giving ourselves a context. We are using drawings to chat, to talk. That's mm. a context. We're making a little film of that. Well, that's mm. a context. We're going to post this on Patreon. That's a context on YouTube another context mm -hmm. so being an illustrator means actually illustrating drawing um uh, and if you draw you can call yourself an illustrator whether it's an illustrator of books it's an illustrator you know drawing live it's an illustrator on social media they are all valid and that is what being an illustrator is um giving yourself a context in which to produce pictures. Mm. I think that's quite a nice way to conclude it.